but uh, you know, on the usual levels that might be advocated uh, in this country, uh, they're not too high, and you can get your level up from let's say twenty or fifteen twenty, which is always considered too low. Up, you can get up to thirty. Uh, part of that story broke out in the news uh, some years ago. The guy that was advocating that kind of change was associated with the Vitamin D Council. Okay. And all right, so to go back to your thesis about whole foods being better than taking individual nutrients, um, what, like, obviously there's, there, you know, within the whole foods, plant-based world, there are um, people who say different things, you know, there, I know, I, I don't know what his stance is on this currently, but I know that your your friend, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, for a while was, was against taking nuts and seeds. I don't know where he's at. So there's the, you know, there's the fat stuff. And then you have uh, someone like Brian Clement who says, don't eat fruit. The World Health Organization says that fruit, a lack of fruit is the number one indicator for poor health in the, in the world. So there's a lot of confusion with that in that. What are your thoughts on which parts of the whole food plant-based diet are essential? Should people try to eat a little bit of everything? What do you think? Yeah, eating, eating a variety of, uh, first and foremost, eating a variety of plant foods. That includes fruits, vegetables, grains, if you will. Uh, also, some nuts. Uh, I don't want to talk about my friend, uh, Esther, in, in a sense, but he and I have talked about this privately and stuff like this. And I was on a panel with him publicly a couple of years ago, and we were, we were both to ask, hey, why don't you guys say this? And when the other says that, well, why don't you? So we had a public discussion. Uh, you know, and this is what he said at that time was that he didn't want to go and uh, uh, and say to eat nuts uh, because they have nuts in their car, in, in their car, in the, in the glove compartment, they got here and there, and, they, and they, they, they take license to use all they want. Well, he eats walnuts, for starters. Mm. And, uh, so uh, he, 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 I mean, he's a physician, right? He's making recommendations. And so he wants to be on the, kind of on the safe side, as physicians do. And uh, so there's some difficulty maybe with taking too many, but I don't know if those difficulties, to be honest about it. So we eat all the nuts we want. Uh, you know, yeah, but he's backed off from what he once said, I, I would suggest. But he can't, he can't do too much of that shifting. Because, you know, if he said this before and then turned or shifted, it changed later. I don't know. Physicians seem to be that way. <laughs> they don't want to. They want to change, but uh... so now, what about something you know in in the diet like salt? How, should we be concerned with uh, our salt intake? Are there certain yeah. salts better than other salts? As a whole, you know, uh, there's sea salt versus table salt. What what are your thoughts on on the subject of salt? Yeah, again, uh, the one who's uh, probably the most extreme and taking no salt is uh, Doctor Goldhammer. Again, another very good friend of mine. He has a mm -hmm. fasting clinic and I've been there two or three times. He's a great guy. Uh, and uh, he he goes uh, to the, he kind of goes to the extreme in a way, but I, I think I, he doesn't mind my saying this. Uh, and, and that is that we had some private conversations. And, you know, once again, when you're fasting, there's no point of taking salt to, you know, to, just because it's important. And so he, he doesn't see any evidence in favor of taking salt, and he was asking me, he says, do I, do, did I have any evidence that we could take, that we should be taking more than a thousand milligrams or, you know, or let's say 1500 a day? And and I can't think of any evidence that we do need, not need extra, but at the same time, going to the stream and say no salt, that's too, too much for me. I, I've told that to Alan, because uh, it makes food less tasty. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a little bit of salt. And, and if you're going to use salt, maybe sea salt is better than the otherwise. It's a potassium uh, chloride, not the sodium chloride. And uh, so, uh, and I'm kind of relating our, our private conversations that, you know, I, I say we can use salt and, and flavor things a little bit. We can't make it so bland that people aren't going to want to eat it. So, you know, but use it to the table. They usually don't use it during cooking. Uh, and if we go out above a thousand, uh, you know, 1500, that's probably okay. He's more down in the territory, five, six hundred. 
but and he's, he's fascinated. He doesn't want them to use salt at that point in time. I, so we have we have somewhat of a different, not not much difference of opinion actually. And, and does the does the uh, okay? So you so potassium chloride though you think is a better alternative than, yes. than chloride? That's that's probably better. You know, and you don't notice what I'm saying here. You're asking questions. I'm saying things. You, you know, black and white answers don't don't really re exist very well in science. Okay. Yeah. You know, you know, there's not definite number here. <laughs> definite number there. That's that sort of thing. So we have to be, you know, mindful of what we're eating, obviously, but. Of of course, and so now when people are eating a whole food plant based diet, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, are you, you're you're the person who coined the term whole food plant based? Is that correct? Yes, I was on a committee uh, that determines who gets funding. It was a committee of the National Institutes of Health, and I was getting all of our funding, all, all of our funding, a lot of it came from and uh, and I so I was very active in determining who else got money here you know, from other people. And one day. There were about 12, 13 of us on the committee or something like this. We're the ones making the decision on who gets funding and who doesn't. And so at that time, they were all you know, cancer researchers, uh, oncologists and, and cancer researchers. And that was my territory at the time. And they and we started getting a couple of applications of people wanting to study a little bit about nutrition. So my colleagues, all you know, oncologists and, and geneticists and so forth, they asked me, said, well, could you come and explain to us what what your view of nutrition is. So uh, I had to think about it a bit as if I couldn't I couldn't explain it in one one you know hour session. And that's at that time I didn't want to use the word vegetarian. Because the vegetarian word to me is a bit of a mischief. It's not accurate. It's just the scientific basis for vegetarianism has not been good. It's been back to been rather poor. Uh primarily with the standpoint of cholesterol and fat and stuff like that. So I, and I didn't know the word vegan at that time. This was in, in 1978, 79, quite a lot, long time ago. And so I gave my little spiel and I had to think of a word and something. And I said, let's call it plant-based. And then about three or four years later, I was the principal consultant of the Federal Trade Commission on vitamin supplements. And I was getting into this concept of wholeness. So I used the word whole at that time. So between 1970, 77, 78, uh, and then 1982, 83, I put the two words together, uh, you know, whole food, plant-based diet. It didn't go anyplace much. I, I published a bit of it, but it didn't, it didn't take off. God, it didn't, didn't take off until after we wrote the China study. It was, we said it there, my son and I said whole food, plant-based diet. And then it started getting a little bit of attention. But I don't like the words, sorry about those people who, sort of spouse to this. Uh, I didn't come down down that road. And and I actually think that the use of the word vegetarian veganism has not been quite frankly that that good. It's not very good science to start with. And it, it intends it doesn't sell all that well. And I, I have to tell you without the given the name, an individual really big in the community of the, the vegetarian vegan community, uh not PCR but someone else, uh called me up one day out of the clear blue and asked me after China study came out, he said, whatever you're doing, he says, you're doing more to cause change than all of us put together in the vegan vegetarian communities. I took that as a compliment, of course. And so I, I don't, because he's very sensitive to, in his business, work and doing what he does. But uh, I got some encouragement, to say the least. That the well, whole I definitely think... Um you know, not eating animals for animal's sake is uh, obviously, you know, I, I'm personally vegan, but I consider myself vegan and whole food plant-based. And I see them as, as two separate things that have overlapping, but don't necessarily need to overlap. So you can be vegan with without eating anything healthy and you can be right, right. plant-based and not really care about the animals and do things that are not necessarily good for the animals. <laughs> They're really very separate things. So now in the community of, uh, in the whole food plant-based community, there is an arrogance to some extent of oh i'm shielded from everything right what right. what is which oh. is clearly not true um so how often do you find that people who are eating and properly so a whole food plant based diet still end up with something like cancer or other diseases good question i mean uh, obviously if you look at the data your population data especially as i was showing those charts and stuff like that 
the lowest rates tend to be obviously those people who are eating, you know, on that, on that end of the scale, eating plant based diets. Uh, then you look at the start. You're looking at the mechanistic study in the laboratory study, and of course, what I saw over the years was just pretty, pretty uh, uh, emphatic, almost I, I should say. But at the same time, at the same time, I get to your question uh, again. Uh, without being hard and fast on these things, the best evidence that we have, if you do a whole food plant based and you do it well, your your risk of getting uh, let's say those different diseases only like on average 10 percent at the most of what the, the the high areas are and the united states is always high